California Governor Gavin Newsom will remain in office as CBS News projects he has survived the recall effort against him. Newsom thanked those who voted no in his victory speech last night. Thank you all very much and thank you to 40 million Americans, 40 million Californians, and thank you for rejecting this recall. Republican frontrunner Larry Elder conceded the race but told people to, quote, stay tuned. Exit polling revealed the coronavirus was the most important issue to voters overall. CBS News's Anthony Pura reports from Los Angeles. California Governor Gavin Newsom will get back to work today. It's what he tweeted last night after soundly squashing a vote to recall him from office. The vote was seen as a referendum on the strict measures Newsom has enacted during the coronavirus pandemic. We said yes to science. We said yes to vaccines. We said yes to ending this pandemic. According to a CBS News exit poll, coronavirus was the most important issue for those voting to keep Newsom in office. But among those who voted to oust the governor, the economy and homelessness topped the list. But defeating the recall attempt was not a sure thing. Newsom got in-person support from President Biden and Vice President Harris. Republican leaders largely stayed away from supporting the candidates vying for Newsom's job. Former President Trump only made unsubstantiated claims that the election was rigged. GOP frontrunner Larry Elder conceded the election last night. We may have lost the, the battle, but we are going to win the war. That war could be California's next gubernatorial election in just 14 months, a race that may again pit Elder against Newsom. Anthony Pura, CBS News, Los Angeles. For more on this, I want to bring in Joel Payne and Matt Gorman. Joel is a CBS News political contributor and Democratic strategist, and Matt is a Republican strategist and former aide to Mitt Romney and Jeb Bush. Welcome to both of you. Joel, let me start with you. What do you think Newsom's win means for the state of the Democratic Party overall and within California? I try to stay away from hyperbolic or melodramatic conclusions after, you know, off cycle um, special elections in states where, look, Gavin Newsom was supposed to have that result happen last night. But here's a couple things that I do think happened. Um, Gavin Newsom could mimic the trajectory of a Republican governor who found himself in a very similar position about a decade ago, Scott Walker. He was recalled in his state, and the failed attempt to recall him supercharged his career. He became a candidate for president and kind of a Republican um, you know, celebrity, um, so to speak, um, in terms of pushing back against uh, Democrats. I think Newsom probably was empowered a bit by the really strong pushback of the recall effort last night. I think to, to the point of the package that you just had, COVID was a big issue. I think Democrats can learn a lot about how to campaign successfully in this environment with COVID being at the backdrop. But I think the biggest takeaway is Democrats were able to nationalize this effort and they were able to elevate one candidate, Larry Elder, and use Elder via, uh, versus Newsom and use that as a binary choice that put voters in a position where they said, you may not love Garrett, Gavin Newsom, but you really won't like Larry Elder. And I think ultimately that's the story of the recall. And so, Matt, what's your perspective? Was this a referendum against Republicans? Do you see it differently? Uh, tell me your view of the state of the Republican Party in California and overall. Well, look, I, I, my big takeaway is that a Republican probably won't win statewide in California for quite a while, uh, just like it was, if you asked me, two days ago. Um, but, but look, you had a governor, and Gavin Newsom, have to spend $30 million, as your package said, bring the president and the vice president out, and have a talk show host, Larry Elder, who wasn't the best candidate to run that race, all happen just to revert to essentially where he was in 2018 when he ran for governor for the first time. Look. I, I don't want to extrapolate too much of this because, again, this is a deep blue state. Uh, if Democrats think they can run this playbook with a compressed recall timeline uh, in places like Nevada, Florida, New Hampshire next year, uh, they're going to have a lot different result than they saw last night uh, in California. And let's remember, too, when Trump was on the ballot in 2020 last year, uh, Republicans actually flipped two Democratic held House seats in Orange County. So we have proven that we can win in California, even with Donald Trump on the ballot, who lost historically in that state. 
Right. And Joel, you know, President Biden said the outcome in California would have implications across the nation. So now that we know that Governor Newsom will remain in office, what implications do you think this will ultimately have? Well, look, uh, and I take Matt's all of his points there, which are really kind of smartly laid out. I do think Republicans have a challenge as to how and whether and whether they can distance themselves from the legacy of Donald Trump. Um, it was very much on display here in California. And again, take Matt's point that California is not the rest of the country politically, but it's very clear that Donald Trump, the specter of Trumpism in the form of Larry Elder, was a really useful boogeyman for Democrats here. And I actually think that um, Gavin Newsom, Joe Biden, every named Democrat in the country will look at that and will certainly extrapolate some lessons from that. Um, and again, I just think the, the bigger message here is um, I, I, I get the sense that um, Republicans, if they had their druthers, would have rather not had one candidate like a Larry Elder stand out from the pack. I, I imagine a generic Republican would have done better against Gavin Newsom than Larry Elder did. Yeah, Matt, can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, you know, Elder was the leading Republican gubernatorial candidate in this race, and exit polls showed he appeared to be popular uh, among GOP voters. Yet, I've heard you both say you didn't think he was the best candidate. Um, so what kind of Republican candidate do you think uh, could win in California? And what do you expect to see from Larry Elder in the future? Yeah, yeah, Elder was a tough fit statewide for California. And, and here's the conundrum when it comes to recalls. And we've only had really one in modern history, but there's a little bit of a trend forming. Uh, you need a candidate who's going to challenge, essentially, the sitting governor with extremely high name ID. Take Arnold Schwarzenegger, for instance, because you need to combat a sitting governor where to get on the air on TV, the TV rates are exorbitant. Uh, so it's almost prohibitive in that respect. You also need someone, this is where Elder kind of failed a little bit, uh, where he doesn't, um, he or she doesn't immediately nationalize the race or immediately mobilize the other side. That's what Elder did. And he turned this from a little bit of a sleepier mm -hmm. race to one that was pretty hot. And him talking about how he was going to appoint a Republican, Dianne Feinstein seat, you don't want to be talking about that. You want to be focused again on the economy, homelessness, COVID, those things that folks voted on, according to your package. And, and look, I think Elder, he's still going to be a force in California politics, even if he doesn't run again. Folks will want his endorsement. But we had to walk that tight rope. And Arnold Schwarzenegger did in 03. It's going to be tough for folks to do it going forward. All right. So Elder missed the mark. Uh, but Joel, exit polling also showed that COVID-19 was the main issue that voters cared about overall. How do you think that this issue factored into the race? And do you expect that this could be the case again in the midterm elections? I mean, sadly, COVID-19 is still very much with us. Yeah, COVID's not going anywhere. Um, you know, a lot of times it's interesting when you look at polling and they say economy, I think you could actually put in parentheses COVID next to it, right? Because um, it's really become an economic issue. When you put education, you could put COVID next to it because it's become an education issue. COVID infects everything. It's actually the reason why Joe Biden saw his national ratings drop a bit. I know Afghanistan was the, the natural whipping boy that people assumed was the reason why, but it was actually COVID. It was the rise in Delta and rising discomfort um, around the country related to that. So I, I actually think that um, Democrats have to stay laser focused on being very pragmatic and very practical about addressing the issues with COVID. I think that's why President Biden moved pretty effectively and pretty quickly on those vaccine mandates, which while politically polarizing are nationally very popular. And I think you'll see Democrats continue to be very bullish at attacking the COVID pandemic. And yet, so Matt, what's your take on what's next for the Republican Party as it shifts its focus to next year's midterm elections? Is COVID also going to be, uh, you know, top of mind for Republican voters, or is it going to be back to, you know, immigration and some of those top line issues that Donald Trump ran so successfully on? Well, well, just as a, as a citizen, I hope COVID is on top of mind. I hope we would have beaten it. And folks are, are getting well again. But if it is. Look, I think there, to Joel's point, I'll, I'll extrapolate a little bit on it. I think it, he's right. There are broader implications, right? Whether that's e the economic recovery, whether well, that's inflation, which I can tell you firsthand, the polling among Republican, especially Republican House districts with inflation, is very positive for our party. 
Um, but also, I think it's you know you can look at something like one thing we haven't talked about: Biden's infrastructure bill. Uh, it's kind of stalled a little bit in Congress. The spending argument. I could see really uh, resonating with swing voters as well. These are things I'm looking to as we go into next year. Uh, Republicans are in the catbird seat, mm -hmm. at least the House, if not the Senate. All right. Well, Matt Gorman and Joel Payne, thanks to both of you. We appreciate you joining us. Thanks Thank so you. much.